In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a really quick halftone effect to your animation and footage all inside After Effects. Let's start in an empty comp and drag in the animation that we want to apply the effect to. I'm going to be using my YouTube intro sequence and let's pre-comp that as well and call that animation base. So we can swap out the content for that easily later. And we can actually hide this layer now. And now create a new solid with control Y and we need this to be 100% white. Let's click OK. And we will need this even if our animation already has a white background. Now we need to create a layer with a bunch of dots. So let's create another solid with control Y. Let's make this one black and call this one dots because we always label our layers. And now let's add the effect CC ball action. Let's set the grid spacing to four and the ball size down to 12. There we are, we have a nice grid of dots. Now let's add a new adjustment layer with Control alt y which is where all the magic's gonna happen. And here, let's add the effect Camera Lens Blur. At the moment, that is just blurring our dots, but let's change the blur map from None. Let's use the layer Animation Base. And let's select Effects and Masks as well. And what this is doing is taking the luminance from our animation layer and applying more blur to the lighter areas. But we want the opposite of that, so let's select Invert Blur Map, and that inverts. So now let's flick on our animation base comp so we can see we've got a dinosaur here and we can see that the background is much lighter than the dinosaur and the right of the dinosaur is the darkest part. Let's hide that again and now we can see that it's blurring more the areas that are darker. And when it's blurring our dots, it's increasing the size of them. But that's kind of hard to tell because they get lighter the more they are blurred. So to fix that, we want to add a levels effect and we really want to crush the blacks. So let's drag this arrow on the left here way over to the right until everything is black. And you can see we're already really close to our half tone effect. Let's increase this blur radius of the camera lens blur up to six, just to make those darker spots a little darker. And now let's go and add a few effects to our animation base comp. Let's add a curves effect on there. And I'm really gonna darken the shadows by dragging this handle way over to the right so that these dark areas are almost completely black. And you can tweak this curve to get a contrast that you like. Now, if we go over to a frame where we have strokes in our animation, you can see that these shapes all have outlines and they're being preserved from the camera lens blur trick. And this is great if you want a more comic book look where you've got clear defined lines and it's only the colored fills that have this half tone effect. But it can look a bit weird when the lines occur between the dots. So to get rid of that, we can add a Gaussian blur to this animation base layer. And I think about five pixels should be enough. Let's actually go up to eight. And you can see that that just softens these edges so it doesn't appear like a crisp line. It's having the same halftone effect apply uniformly all over the scene. Now, if you want the overall dots to be bigger, we can select our dots layer, increase the grid spacing on our dots to maybe six, and then increase the ball size to match, maybe 24. But I think I preferred where we had it. Let's undo that. And I would also like these dots to shift around a little bit as well. So on our dots layer, I'm going to add a wiggle effect to our position. I'll click the stopwatch and I'll type wiggle 12,3. So it'll move randomly three pixels 12 times a second. And that just gives a really subtle boiling effect and a bit of texture as if each frame was individually printed out and scanned back in. That's maybe a bit too intense happening every frame. So I'm going to add a posterized time effect to our top effects layer and set it to 12. So now the whole thing will play at 12 frames per second and just look a bit more like a stop motion animation. Now you may have noticed that we have a few areas that are pure white that still have dots in them, which wouldn't happen in a real halftone effect, like in our bat here. So to fix that, what we can do is duplicate our animation base layer. Let's move it above our dots and let's get rid of these effects and make it visible. Now let's add a levels effect and a hue and saturation. And let's just reduce the saturation down to grayscale. Let's zoom in and we've got all this gray chatter. So let's drag this arrow over to the right to make all of that white. And then let's set the blending mode of this layer to screen. And there we are, we've got our pure whites back. But I think I kind of like the look of it with a few dots still there. And if you want to make it look a bit more like newsprint, I've added some looping paper textures and I've got a separate tutorial that goes into more detail about exactly that. And from here, we can go into our animation base comp and replace our intro with any animation. And then all our effects are updated in the main comp. It will even work on video footage as well. Please take a deeper look through this project file, which is available for download for free down in the description. To discover the best ways to learn motion design, I've created a short playlist of videos that I'll think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. Please like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video.